Hey folks, I'm back with you again. Uh, today I was going to mount the scope on my new service rifle. The mount came in while I was at work, been waiting on that. And I thought, well, might as well make a video of it and share it with you folks. This is the new service rifle. It is a, well, it's actually a build, I guess you would say. The upper is a White Oak Armament uh, Geisley National Match uh, complete upper with uh, Bartland barrel. It's a 20 inch heavy barrel, stainless steel. Uh, with a 4R twist and the lower is an Aero Precision M4. Uh, I really like the lower in that uh, there's a couple of couple of things about it that's, that are unique about it. There's an Allen screw on the bolt release instead of just a pin. I really like that and on the takedown pin here in the back between the upper and the lower you can adjust the tension on that so you can take the slot between the upper and the lower that you normally have on an AR-15, you can take that out. The stock is a standard A2 stock. Uh, well, I say standard. It's hollow and there's a lead weight in the back of it. That lead weight is to help balance the rifle. So all your weight's not out there on that upper. Uh, I've got iron sights on it right now. I've got a I've got a Magpul Embus Pro adjustable front, front sight. This is an Aero Precision A2 uh, carry handle rear sight, and it has both windage and elevation adjustment. I got that because I also shoot CMP uh, competitions with service rifle, and on those we use iron sights only. So an interchange, iron sights and the scope, it's not an ideal thing. Ideal would be to have two rifles, but that's pretty expensive, so I don't. Uh, the iron sights, on an AR-15 wind up being right at 2.5 inches above center of bore and you want your scope mount to put your scope at that same thing and the reason for that being that you don't want to have to you don't want it too low like a half inch or an inch where you have to really tilt your head over like that and you don't want it any higher because you have to, have to build your cheek weld up so this scope will be mounted at exactly the same height that these iron sights are and it's really cool. Uh, what else can I tell you about the rifle? I also have a ergo grip on it. It's a little bit fatter. I like that really well and I've got, got a Geisley automatics trigger. It's a two stage and it's adjustable. I've got it set to right at 4.7 pounds. 4.5 pounds is the minimum that we can have for uh, competition. And this is a Ron Brown uh, leather sling from Creedmoor. Uh, really nice slings for competition. You can actually double them up. You can get a little more build up when you're holding it for the offhand or the sitting position. And they don't put as much tension on your arm so you don't get any heartbeat. You don't get as much heartbeat uh, bounce on it that, like you would with a, a smaller, thinner uh, web sling. Went out to about two and a half weeks ago to get the iron sights set and uh, sighted in, and thing shoots really good. Uh, 100 yards, I uh, had a six shot group with 62 grain factory, uh, just full metal jacket ball ammo, and that group shot uh, 0.8773 inches. And I shot a group with the 77 grain Sierra Match King boat tail hollow point that's uh, the ammunition I use across the board for the 200 300 600 uh, with iron sights that shot a group of 0.3768 so I'm really excited to see what it shoots with a scope I know it's going to be a little tighter than that but that is a great group so I'm loving the rifle so far let's uh, so let's talk about the spur mount for a minute mount yeah okay ordered a mount before I went to work Optics Planet, <laughs> those folks suck. Um, I ordered a Geisley mount, this cantilever like this, set up for an AR-15 so it'd be higher. Um, ordered it like, I don't know, April the 6th. Got a notification a day or two later, hey, your mount's gonna ship between April the 9th and April the 15th. I'm like, okay, that's great. I'm out of town for two weeks, won't be home till the 28th, it'll be there waiting. Mm, about three days later, I get another notification from Optics Planet. Hey, uh, your mount's gonna ship between April the 15th and April the 20th. 
Okay, still no big deal. I should have it by the 28th when I get home. The next day I get a notification that, ah, oh, your mount's gonna ship between June 6th and June 15th. I thought, no, it's not, because I'm gonna cancel the damn thing. I need it when I got home because I've got a four day competition down in Georgia. First day is a Marine Corps League team competition that we're shooting on Thursday. And then we have three days of individual shoot and I can't get my damn scope out. So canceled that, called Mile High Shooting. Uh, Mile High Shooting, I can't say enough about those folks. They're really good. I had a spur mount that I got for my uh, Ruger Precision Rifle and uh, Trijicon 10 mile scope. I'll talk about that on another day. But uh, anyway, one of the heads on the mounting screw stripped out. Really specialized screw. Nobody carries that screw in the United States. And Mile High is the only distributor for spur in the US. Uh, Optics Planet sells spur underneath uh, Mile High. And that's where I bought the other spur mount. But anyway, I called Mile High about that screw. He said, oh, I'll send you a whole pack of them out. He sent like a dozen screws out. It takes four across on that uh, Ruger. But, uh, and what happened, I had a, I'd used a cheap head on it and it kind of, kind of buggered up the Torx head on it. So I needed a new screw. And uh, hell, he sent me a whole pack out, free of charge. So when I wanted to get another mount for this, I thought, I'm gonna go with a spur. It's, uh, and you just can't beat these things, they're awesome. And I called Mile High. I had this one in stock, and it's for an AR, and he shipped it right out. Uh, it was waiting on me when I got home. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit. That's what it looks like. This is a cantilever. You really want a cantilever on the uh, AR-15 so it doesn't get in the way of breaking your upper and lower apart. Um, but the spur mounts are really unique in that they don't they don't go together on the top and bottom like most scope mounts. They go together on a 45, which I really like that. And I really like that it gives a parallel view right here. And you can you can check and see if your rifle's level. But they, you know, it also has, this one does not, it's supposed to, but my other one, it's got a bubble level right here. So you can also make sure your rifle's level. Uh, really easy to attach lights or uh, lasers, anything you want on the side, uh, cosine indicator, uh, it's all there. Yeah, they're a little pricey, but hmm, I've decided they're damn well worth it. Um, also, this one is 1.89 inches high. You need a high one for an AR-15 so you don't get your head cocked. Um, it'll wind up being the exact same height as my uh, iron sights, which is like 2.5 inches above, uh, above the bore. You take the center of the scope uh, down to the bottom, it's 0.59 inches. You add that to the 1.89 inches here, that this is going to set up off of the Picatinny rail, and bam, I'm right at 2.5 inches, just like the iron sights. So I won't have to change anything with my alignment or my cheek weld. Uh, it'll be great. Yeah, I changed it back and forth from iron sights to scope is not going to be ideal. I am going to mark the scope uh, where I have it. So, so hopefully re-zeroing it's going to be minimal. But uh, anyway, let's pull this puppy off and uh, we'll get started mounting the scope. And you'll see another reason why I really like these spurs. Mounting the scope on here and getting it level is so damn simple. It, it's worth the extra money. So we'll be right back. So this A2 combination of rear carry handle and adjustable sight, it pops right off with the screwdriver. Um, you can twist it off, but I don't want to use channel locks on it. I've got it on there with this. This big ass screwdriver, you can get uh, pretty good torque. There's, I haven't found any torque specifications on this anywhere. And I don't have to worry too much about which holes it came out of because it matches right up right there. When I put the scope on I will mark the notches that I put it in so I can take it off put it back in the same one. When I change them out for a competition where I have to use iron sights versus a scope yeah there'll be a uh, I'll need to sight it in again but uh, shouldn't be very far off. And uh, We'll just get that puppy off of there and 
we'll get going with the scope. So this scope is an Athlon BTR Helos. It's a one to four and a half. It has a 30 millimeter tube and the objective lens is 24 millimeters. I looked at a lot of scopes for this rifle. Uh, four and a half uh, magnification is the maximum that we can use. Uh, and I think this is the only scope that has it. It came down to this or the Hilux X XTC. Now Hilux is a sponsor of the Marine Corps League shooting team that I'm on. And I guess as a sponsor we get a discount. They were going to give me a 20% discount on that XTC. That Hilux XTC retailed for $475. 20% off would make it $380. I'm also a member of Expert Voice. I get a discount on stuff there. The Athlon Optics, I get a 40% discount. This scope retails for five, was it $537.49, 40% discount. I got it for $328. So $52 cheaper than the Hilux. I actually like it better than the Hilux. It's got a it's got an illuminated reticle. Um, I actually like the reticle better. Um, I'll flash a picture up uh, real quick in the video right here. In the picture you can see the uh, difference in the reticles. Um, the Athlon it gives more holdover indications, and it also gives more windage hold marks. Um, scope is. They're about the same size. I think this one is nine and a half inches. The Hilux is 10. Uh, this one's 22.9 ounces. The Hilux is um, 22. And yes, this is made in China, but Hilux is made in China too. I've got a little bit of experience with Athlon Scope. My son has one. Uh, actually, it's the Helos BTR Gen 2. I think it's, uh, it's a 4 to 20, I believe, uh, for his 6.5. Uh, Creedmoor uh, for his Begara 6.5 Creedmoor uh, hunting rifle and I looked through that and man I really love it the, the optics are good uh, what little bit I've looked at this on a very close parallax setting and very close range it's got a little bit of distortion around the edge other than that the glass is really clear the uh, chromatic is really good uh, we shoot 200 300 600 yards so um, I've got, I've got a 600 yard point on out there and it's clear as day at 600 yards. Um, so let's get started mounting this thing. So I've got a Wheeler Fat Wrench torque driver. Uh, that's what I use. This thing is great. Uh, got great torque indications on it. And one thing I'm gonna have to run get real quick is the rosin. Um, you can actually glue on the inside of these. You don't need to lap these at all. They're, they're machined perfect. Uh, they've got little grooves in them. You can glue them for a permanent. I don't really want permanent, but I'm gonna put a little rosin on there. It helps hold the tube just a little bit tighter. Be right back. So we've got a pack of screws here, and they say you don't need to use any Loctite on these. They've got they put some kind of coating on them uh, to help keep them tight, like uh, Loctite Blue would. Uh, it's not permanent, but they say they don't recommend putting anything else on there. Uh, one other thing I didn't say about the Athlon scope versus the uh, Helos is the Athlon has an unconditional lifetime warranty. It's just like the warranty, just like Vortex. So it's another big reason. Hilux, I think they have like a one year limited warranty. So, get a little, a little rosin in here. Messy, yeah, who cares? We're not out here to look pretty, we're out here to shoot X's, right? Bit. 
there's not a lot of room for adjustment uh, this scope in this mount perhaps mm, three quarters of an inch at most I'm gonna say it's really probably closer to five eighths Let me get one of those in place there and get a couple of screws started now, if I wasn't doing this for a video we'd probably do it just a little bit differently but uh, you know for the video so that one down a little bit. Put one on the bottom corner from there. Put that down just a little. And ideally when you snug it, you're kind of looking to have the same margin for both. You don't want one closed and uh, the other one having a gap in it. That's not really cool. Not the way you got a scope, so. too tight yet because uh, I don't know how far I want to adjust it in the mounts. Yeah, a little bit more on that. Okay. That looks good. All right. Now, run these out and get it in position. It's pretty cool on this one, unlike the other spur mount that I've got. Uh, these are numbered and what order you should tighten them and torque them down. Uh, so it's got number one, number two, number three, number four. And these torque to 45 pounds. The ones on the scope body, they torque, I'll have to double check it, but I think it's uh, 18 to 25. I always want to check that and uh, double check with the scope manufacturer that uh, those settings are cool. So that's what we got right now. I'm going to run and get a stool. And we'll start looking at this to check the uh, eye relief. I'm pretty sure that's going to have to come forward. So probably somewhere in that facility. That's, that's that actually is pretty good on the eye relief. And come forward that far. Now I can come back that far. I want more set up. That's looking real good right there. I've got it one, two, three. I'm in the fourth hole up. Fourth, I'm in the fourth groove up. Let's see what it looks like in the fifth. And it's starting to get out a little bit right there. I have to get close, way closer up on it. I don't think that's going to be... I think I want to come back one. And I'll have a little adjustment that I can use in the rings themselves about uh, three quarter, five eighths of an inch. Well, actually I've got it half, so I've probably got about, probably got about three eighths of an inch. I'm going to go with it right there for now, uh, ultimately, and I'm not going to film all, all of it, but ultimately what I need to do, I need to get down in a true prone position, I need to get in a sitting position and an offhand position, and make sure that the eye relief is good in all three of those before I decide on the uh, absolute. Um, I'm going to snug it down a little bit right there, and then we will go to leveling it, which is, like I said with the spur mount, is super simple. So when you're mounting it to the Picatinny rail, these torque screws take 45 pounds of uh, torque. I'm not gonna put all of them on right now, but <clears throat> it's numbered right here, one, two, three, four, uh, when you start tightening them down. And one other thing you wanna do 
you want to make sure that the scope mount is pulled all the, there's a little bit of play in there you want to make sure it's pulled all the way back to to the back of that groove uh, 5.56 five, doesn't kick that much and it's not going to affect your scope a whole lot but uh, that's just always a good practice to move it to the very back of that and that will help eliminate rifle recoil from moving your scope around so so we've got those set just just barely and now I'm going to show you how we level this thing with the spur mount oh yeah okay now what's cool about this system is there's a little groove right here and you've got a 10 degree wedge and this 10 degree wedge you set it in this groove and it hits the bottom of the scope and you just rotate and snug until bam now that thing is perfectly in line with the Picatinny rail. It's level this way with the Picatinny rail. Don't have to lay a level up on top of here. It's perfect. And that is so dang easy. Let's take a quick look at here. Oh yeah, that looks great. If I pull it around to something parallel, that lines up. I can't see the parallel knobs on the uh, on the scope mount, but what's nice about how these things are built, it doesn't block the view at all of the parallax adjustment or the intensity adjustment for the illuminated reticle. And I have no blockage over here because of these 45 mounts on my windage. Uh, this thing is factory zeroed and I double checked it. Uh, I went to a mechanical zero, so the only thing I've got to do now is Get it to where we're going to be on paper and when i get ready to do that i've got a wheeler laser and i will just put up a target out there at about 30 yards use the laser come in on that and uh, we'll get it set for about 100 yards zero and then we'll take it to the range so i'm going to torque these down and then check all the other positions a, a prone setting and offhand position and see if i need to do any other adjustment on that but yeah, with these scopes, that's uh, it's quick and easy. I'll have to torque everything down. Uh, like I said, these are 45 foot pounds, and I'm sorry, these are 45 inch pounds, and these are 18 to 25, uh, according to whatever the scope manufacturer has. Athlon did not put a setting uh, with their scope, so I'm going to go with 20, the lower end. Um, you know, it's not a night force; it's not the quality of a night force, so. We don't want to crush that tube at all. 20 should be more than enough to hold this. It's two pounds over than uh, uh, the spur recommendation. And uh, with the recoil this rifle has, 20 will be fine. We'll just get them all the same. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Hit that like and uh, subscribe button. And uh, I'll try to get some more videos out to you soon. Maybe from our competition down in Georgia. The, uh, what do they call it? The Southern, Southern something uh, at the River Bend. Uh, at the River Bend Gun Club in uh, Dawsonville, Georgia. We'll be down there Thursday, the Marine Corps League uh, shooting team. I think there'll be six of us, so we'll have four shooters and two alternates. Don't know who's going to be the shooter and the alternate yet. So talk to you later, guys.